Hey, this is Corey with Sure. In this video tutorial, we'll talk about how to set up, test, and monitor RF zones. You should consider using RF zones when you're working with two or more separate performance areas, and you're not getting enough frequencies with the single default RF zone. If you're unsure of how many RF zones you should be working with, it may be a good idea to start by measuring how much RF signal from a given performance area is reaching another performance area. Start by setting up all of your receivers and antennas in each performance area as they would be configured during the production. Turn on one transmitter in only one performance area and set it to its highest RF output power. Make sure all other transmitters are off. Next, perform RF spectrum scans using your networked receivers and wireless workbench. Select at least one receiver from each performance area and run a spectrum scan using the frequency plot tool. Then, measure the received signal of the operating transmitter in each of the scans taken and make note of these values. Repeat these steps using a transmitter in each performance area, remembering to turn off the previous transmitter. When you're finished, these values can be translated into the RF zone relationships you need to create in Wireless Workbench. If the transmitter signal peak in the scan is less than negative 85 dBm, you can consider the performance areas as separate RF zones, meaning you can ignore both channel-to-channel -channel and channel-to-intermodulation spacing. If the signal peak is between negative 70 dBm and negative 85 dBm, consider these areas as related, so respect channel-to-channel -channel spacing but ignore channel-to-intermodulation spacing. And if the signal peak is greater than negative 70 dBm, the performance areas are effectively in the same environment. You can either calculate them as a single RF zone, or depending on how many performance areas you may have, you can keep them as separate RF zones and continue to respect channel-to-channel -channel and channel-to-intermodulation spacing. These are general recommendations. Depending on your particular RF environment and preference, you may choose to use different values and settings. Now that we know how many RF zones we need, and how they relate to each other, we can recreate them in Wireless Workbench. First, select Manage Zones from the Tools menu. Here, you can create or remove RF zones, rename them, and change their color. Once you create at least one additional zone, the Configure tab becomes available. What you see here are different types of relationships that RF zones can have, and the reason why we measured and documented this earlier. They are configured in a matrix that shows the relationship of each zone to the next. We can use the values that we noted before to assign zone relationships, and now we're ready to begin coordinating frequencies across multiple RF zones. So, once you know how devices behave in your environment, it's a breeze to configure them in Wireless Workbench. For more information, visit sure.com.